We're back. The boys are back in town. Well, actually, I shouldn't say it like that because Chad's certainly not back in town. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. Rebel hello. Stakes time. Yippee. Yeah, it's, I don't think we're going to get a, well, I don't know. I'm not so sure we're going to get a, a top Kentucky Derby winner, uh, contender out of this race, but you never know. Stranger why? things have happened. Well, why do you say that? Timberlake is going to be a major player. All right. Well, then I guess he'll probably win this race by 10 lengths then. If well, if if he's that uh, good, this is not a great Kentucky Derby. Well, is this considered a prep race yet? Like a real prep race? Yes. It's a, yes. Well, they're getting 50 points, aren't they? It counts it's, for it's, something. It's 1,000% a prep race. It's a good field. I'm not exactly sure what your uh, analysis there of uh, it's not a good race. Well, the sheets say that it's not a good field. The sheets are for sleeping. <laughs> okay. So uh, we're going to go into that. We're also going to. All right. Young three-year-olds. They're young three-year-olds that are on the improved. Okay. Uh, well, that's why you're the expert. I'm just uh, the host. That's what do I know? Uh, all right. So we're also going to uh, talk about the Saudi Cup, obviously, because that's where Chad is. And uh, it's a, what, a 14-horse field, Chad? 14-horse field, $20 million purse, the biggest most expensive race in the world. And that will go off uh, at uh, when? It's next Saturday. Saturday. Why are we doing no, it it's, today? Oh, it's this Saturday. It's oh, this it Saturday. Is um, so first post is, uh, we looked this up before. So it's 4 o'clock in Dubai. It's 3 o'clock in Saudi Arabia. It's 12 o'clock in England, which makes it about, I think, 6 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. I uh, will be for six or seven a.m. first post um, in Saudi on, Arabia on the east we'll coast. Have, uh, on the east coast, we'll have some. Oh, uh, California, it's three o'clock in the morning. How about in we'll Hawaii? Have Jimmy Jer- we'll have some Jimmy Jerkin horses uh, on the undercard sprinkled in. Uh, three Jimmy Jerkin horses running early, including a really cool horse named Jack the Grocer. Uh, and then later on, you have the three-year-old race, which is not a prep for the Kentucky Derby, but. Um, there's a horse that's kind of generating some buzz right now from Japan. Um, everyone's saying that he's the, the next superstar. Uh, if he wins, if he wins in Saudi, he'll go to Dubai. And if he wins in Dubai, then he qualifies for the Kentucky what's, Derby. What's his name? Uh, young, uh, young something. I forget what it is. Um, well, so he's, we'd like to know who it is. He's so. running. I'll tell you right now. I was just, I was just studying it before. Um, so he he's running against uh, two of America's own in uh, Bookham Dano and Bentornado for uh, Jose D'Angelo. They're they're both horses that think that they don't want to go the mile and a quarter distance of the Kentucky Derby, but they think they're nice horses and it's a million and a half dollar purse. So they're going to give it a shot. And what race is this called? That's the Saudi Derby. Okay. In the sprint race, America's going to be represented. What? You didn't give us the name of the Japanese horse. I'm sorry. What's that? What's the name of the Japanese horse? Young what? The Japanese horse is Forever Young. Oh, Forever Young. That's like that song that that guy wrote. Okay. Yeah. There's also a, there's a local Saudi Arabian horse that's by Bobby's Kitten, which uh, I don't know. If, we haven't seen a lot of Bobby's Kittens. Obviously, he stands... John, Chad, we're having a hard time. We lost Chad. We did. He disappeared off this my screen. Is See, this is the screen? unfortunately this is what happens. I mean, we're tr- we're trying to get the benefits of being outdoors, and we heard the crows in the background, and it was really looking good there for a little while. But so but that he, was the Saudi Derby. The price, we, the price we pay. Yeah. Yeah, so we haven't even gotten yet to the Saudi Cup. So he's got this Isolate hat on, so we know who he's going for. Isolate's being ridden by Joel Rosario. And he's 20-1 to 1 on the morning line. Okay. Trainer Doug Watson. Baffert has National Treasure. 
It was Pratt that he's won. What do you mean? Isn't White a Barrio in that race? Yes. Chad, who do you like in the big race? The Saudi Cup. So the big race is loaded, absolutely loaded with speed. Everybody wants to go to the lead. The Japanese horses, the local horses, um, the American horses. The, the race is, is a ton of speed in the race. Uh, I'm going to give a slight nod right now. Um, if you can get the right trip uh, to Derma Sadagaki, the son of mine, your biscuits. Uh, he was he was second in the Breeders' Cup Classic, was able to sit off the pace a little bit of of Saudi Crown. Wada Barrio was right behind them. I think we'll see a similar kind of thing here. But listen, there was an upset a few years ago, 50 to one shot, named Emblem Road uh, that shocked the world. There's a Saudi horse here named Power by Numbers uh, that might run a big, big race at a big odds if the race falls apart. Really? Um, obviously, yeah. you, you, you know who's in the race with some of these American talents in, in, in White Barrio and uh, old horses of, of Bob Baffert's and Defunded and, and Caramel Road. Going to be closing with He's a cool horse, powers by number. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a big race from from the local Saudi horse this year. That could be very profitable. We'll definitely uh, throw a couple of bucks on power in numbers. Um, isolate. You got the hat. What's yeah, up with cool the 20 horse. to one shot? Well, we didn't think we were going to get in for a while. We thought we were in, and then uh, and then he, it didn't look like he was going to get in. That's why Tyler Gaffleon rides at Oakland on, on Saturday instead of for $20 million in Saudi Arabia. Um, he's a really cool horse, very forward horse. He won the Godolphin Mile two starts back uh, in March, was then freshened up with this race in mind all along. Uh, he won Maktoum Challenge round one in December, going a mile with Tyler Gaffleon uh, as easily as a horse can win off a layoff. Uh, but the question is going to be, look, he, he needs to stretch out to the mile and an eighth distance, uh, which he hasn't done before. And he's he's in a post position Hold on, here Chad. in post two. You're breaking up a second. Hold on. Can you hear me? I hear you perfect. All right. As long as you hear him. All right. Man. So he, he's in a post position in post two where you have the fresh white of Barrio in post one. You have Lemon Pop just to his outside from Japan who likes to go forwardly placed. And you have Saudi Crown who obviously we know where Brad Cox wants to be. Add in more horses on the outside with National Treasure and everything else. He's going to have to break, have the best break of his life and work out a really good trip here with Joel Rosario. Now, you know, obviously we have a lot of confidence in Joel. Joel's a really special, special rider. Uh, and he's been over there before this year. So he knows kind of how that track plays. But um, it's, it's going to be a trip dependent uh, situation. But obviously, uh, we're hopeful, and hopefully he is isolated in front at the wire. Are we ready to start, Greg? Uh, so you heard all that? I heard everything. Okay, Chad. cool. I didn't hear a thing. So you let me know. if uh, I'll let you know if I can't hear him, and you can let me know when it's time for me to jump in. All right, okay. so because uh, that's the most important thing that the viewers hear, not me. All right, so um, th is that it? The, did 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 you uh, are you making a prediction? Did you make a prediction? Can you make a prediction? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Dermot Sadagaki on top of Powers by Numbers, and that's for the Saudi Cup, the World Cup, whatever yeah. cup. That's a big one. All right. So he gave his prediction. Yes, he okay. said Derma Sotogaki over Power by Numbers. All right, sounds good. I will definitely... You didn't hear any of that? Nope. So how are you going to do a show when you can't hear one of the people? I don't know why. It's it's and it's and It's only just Chad. That's it. I have never had this problem with anybody else. So, all right. Uh, let's get into it. But first, we have to wrap up what happened last week. And uh, how about uh, that, uh, that great... Uh, a payout by Tarifa in the Grade Two Rachel Alexander Stakes. You know, you 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 get to the you get to the uh, starting gate. You're thinking, I got a bargain here at six to one with uh, Cox and Pratt. And then uh, midway through the race, you look at the board and it's five to two, and and then the horse yeah. wins. So C A W strikes again, which means um, computer assisted wagering. So a, a ton of money came in. 
You don't understand how much money it took to do that. That was a Saturday. It was a graded stake. It was, uh, you know, one of the highlight races of the day. Yeah, but John, it's a small. It's a small. Listen, it's it's a small field with the with the Brad Cox favorite of the three scratch. So it did it did change the dynamics. No, but the the horse went from six to one to five to two in the middle of the race, Chad. What? What are you shaking your head? (laughs) I don't know. I understand. I understand. If you bet the horse and you think you're getting fourteen or fifteen dollars, and they give you seven dollars, <laughs> I, I don't think you'd be so happy. And I didn't have any skin in the game. I didn't bet that horse. Yeah. I bet a different horse in the race. It's just not right to people. That's all I'm saying. I mean, it is better that you win, no question. It's yes, like, right, but at least that be regular. Well, I mean, we, we've talked. About but it. yes, it's like it's like it, it. It actually is almost like it's a negative, <laughs> when it should be a positive feeling. Right. All right, uh, but then uh, John uh, stayed hot in the big race, the uh, Risen Star, and uh, Sierra Leone. Uh, nice. Uh, that was actually a very uh, good race, the way that that lined up, because you had the top two, Track Phantom being the pace setter, uh, trying to hold on almost wire to wire, and then you had the other top contender, uh, Sierra Leone, who's the closer in the race, nipping him late for the win. And these are two of the top contenders that we've talked about on this show. And they both uh, went head to head with their different uh, uh, running styles. So what did you think about the overall uh, race and these two top contenders, Chad? Chad, look, I think uh, what you thought of certainly a dynamic, a dynamic performance by, by the winner. Right. I mean, come off the layoff. We knew that, he had run. He had run a big race in the Rems, and Jonathan was all over it. You know, I thought he might need a race off the off the bench, and he didn't. Um, so from here, it looks like he's probably going to go to the Bluegrass next. Um, that's the path that Zandon took last year, that made him the favorite in the or two years ago, the made him favorite in the Kentucky Derby. Um, all eyes will be on Chad Brown now. This is a race that he'd certainly like to win. Every trainer would like to win the Kentucky Derby, and this is uh, definitely his best shot. Okay, he's won two Preaknesses before by skipping the Derby. Uh, he's had horses like Zandon. Uh, and for sure, uh, this horse, Jonathan, is his his best horse. By far. I agree, Chad. Okay. And it's a shame because the other best two-year-old on the first Saturday in May will be sitting in a barn in California and won't be able to run. It would have been nice to see Niso send him square off, but <clears throat> Churchill has. We will, uh, we, we will see. We will see. We will, we will see. Uh, I'll tell you what. There, it was very interesting, Jonathan. They had the Derby Future Pool the other day, and it closed with all other three-year-olds as the favorite. And for it to be at this stage now, we're in February, for it to close with all other three-year-olds as the favorite, somebody thinks something that maybe a little birdie in the tree thinks that the Bob Baffert horses are going to be able to run. I haven't heard anything official. This is all uh, rumors and speculation which live in the horse racing world. But I'm not willing to say right now that for sure Bob Baffert horses will not be in the starting gate, despite what it says right now. And when are they going to get points? He's not even running them in races to get points. He always ships a horse to uh, Arkansas, to Oakland. He's, he, wins, he runs in that race every year. He didn't even ship yep. anyone there this year. Well, Muth, I mean, Muth was supposed to go. I don't know what happened to Muth, but Muth was supposed to be their representative in the, uh, in the Rebels, and he didn't get on the plane. Well, but he couldn't train there because of the weather. That could be a problem, too. He's probably job. behind on the training, and he figured he's not running because he's not ready. So that's just what I'm thinking. But maybe you're right, Chad. Maybe they, they – maybe. Who knows? They'll look pretty stupid after all this, but it would be a good thing if they did it, I think. Okay. So that was last week, and congratulations, John. You're hot there uh, because uh, you had Sierra Leone. You had, matter of fact, uh, both you guys had the exacta as well, and you needed the exacta in this one with the top with the top two there. But Sierra, Sierra Leone getting it done. What did Sierra Leone run, John? I didn't see the numbers yet. Uh, I don't know. They're the late coming out this week. All right. Sierra Leone had a 15 and 11 in his first two. Track Phantom was coming off a 13. Um, had run an 11 in his previous race. So they both had 11 tops coming in. Uh, when are we going to see them again, Chad? Uh, we'll see Sierra Leone in the bluegrass at Keeneland. And I would imagine Steve Asperson just kind of rows the boat and, and, and keeps on the track, and we'll see him in the Louisiana Derby next. That would be my uh, 
my pretty uh, pretty confident guesses on both of those. Who was that? I'm sorry, I missed it. Where? I'd say Trek Phantom will go to the to the Louisiana Derby, right. and we'll see Sierra Leone in the Bluegrass. Okay, makes sense. All right, so now let's, right, let's, let's move on to this week. And by the way, did we get a, a, a conf- w- w- one last time Eastern Time Saudi Cup? What time will that race go off, Chad? He told you six in the morning. That's the six in the morning. No, no, no. That's the that's the first that's the first race. Oh, let me let me see no? let me see what time the, the Saudi Cup was. What time, John? He's he's looking it oh, up. Okay, He'll let us know. The Saudi Derby is the six a.m. Eastern Time. That's the Derby, okay. Yeah, not it's, the, cup. No, it's no, no, no. the U.S. the Saudi Derby, not the Saudi Cup. Yeah. All right, so 12 40 Eastern Time will be the the big race. Oh, in the afternoon. Okay, perfect. Is TV is TVG covering it? Do you know? No, it's. Uh, I think it's Fox Sports. It, it'll be uh, the coverage will be brought right? to you by. by uh, yeah, it's on YouTube too. But it'll be brought to you by Michelle Yu. Uh, Nick Luck will be there as well, I believe. Oh, okay. um, Michelle, Michelle did a great job emceeing, emceeing the post position draw yesterday. That's a lot of names to pronounce with a lot of ways you can mess it up. She did a, <laughs> did a very admirable job. Uh, it was already the uh, the leader in the clubhouse for uh, for best commentator when we do our end of the year awards. Just just on the uh, on the post draw alone. Okay, there you go. So what time is it, John? Twelve forty. Oh, Eastern time. So you'll get to see it in the afternoon. Cool. Yeah, covered by Fox. Oh, Fox. Excellent. Got it. All right, let's get this show on the road. Okay. We are going to, and later on, I'll, I'll go over uh, some of the uh, horses to keep an eye on for race nine at Oakland Park. But we're just going to talk about races 10 and 11 here. So let's start with uh, race number 10 at Oakland Park. Uh, of course, coming up is the Rebel Stakes. That's next up. This is a mile and a 16th called the Grade 3 Razorback Candy Cap. It is a $600,000 purse for four-year-olds. Uh, taking a look, and by the way, we do have a, a stacked field of 13. So this is a really good wagering race, John. Uh, the favorite of the race is a 7-2 to two shot, and that's not bad for a favorite. And that's Ain't Life Grand coming off three straight sevens. So it uh, makes sense why this horse is the favorite because I don't really see a whole lot of other sevens. Yeah, but there's only one problem with your sevens. He hasn't been out since last July. I mean, you know, he runs three times and then takes off for six months. I don't know what this horse is going to run. He's five years old. Yeah, if you could guarantee me he's going to come out and run a seven, so then obviously he has a shot. But I don't know about that. Not so easy and not so quick, as Chad would say. John, you're not the only one that doesn't know if he's going to run the seven again. You see he's cross-entered to run on Sunday as well. So the connections look like they have a, a pause for thought that maybe he's not ready for this big 13-horse field off the layoff. and. It, it, it's it's ironic because, like Greg said, he's a seven to two morning line favorite, but they might they might go the easier route and run Sunday instead. I think they should personally. <laughs> All right, uh, let's uh, go through the field here, and uh, the the one and the three are six to one shots. Seize the night and speed bias, speed bias. Now, even though speed bias had an eleven in January, the previous three John were that were eight, nine, and eight. So that's pretty good uh, considering we have a six to one shot who's been at Oakland Park eight times. Only one win, but four plays. So that's not all that bad. But you are getting six to one. Yeah, I mean, you can't even compare Seize the Night and Speed Bias. They're not nowhere near the same horse. Uh, I, I like Speed Bias, and he was actually going to be my top pick. He has what we call an alternating line. He runs a good race followed by a bad race. Well, Time for the good race now. He figures to make a forward move. And if he runs an eight or nine, he's going to be very tough here. And that is my top selection. And Bejarano on board my, my con- as well. My concern with speed by it. Chad? He froze, so we don't get to hear his concern. Okay. <laughs> there he is. Go ahead, Chad. Say it again. We missed you. Now we lost him. <laughs> I guess the racing gods disagreed with him. They they just cut him off. They didn't want to hear what the problem was. Here he is. He's back. All right. So so hey, I can hear him. My concern was my my concern was speed bias, John. And and we talk about this. And, and Greg, you'll appreciate this as a college football guy or a college basketball guy. When they say you play to your level of your competition, right? So you have a, a highly ranked team, and they get they play Duquesne 
and they take them to the wire or they get beat or whatever. Speed Bias was 70 cents to the dollar last time in a three-life allowance race and ran the same race he always runs and found a way to get himself beat. I have so much trouble having confidence in this horse to be the top pick in any race. I don't care if it's a 50 claimer or a grade one. He's going to run a good race. I agree with you, John, and I'll hit the board maybe. But but to make him your top pick, I mean, you have to go back to, to January of 2023 to find his last victory, and oh. that was in a two-life allowance race. I mean, and he actually got beat by season night the race before that. Look, I, I just I, – I can't trust he, – he's – I do not trust the horse. I'm not. I'm not going to uh, to the oasis with this horse. If you want him, you can have him. But I'm. I. I think he's. He's certainly a playable and underneath. But I. How, it's so tough. I, you're a brave soul to to pick him on top here, John. I am a brave soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, but he, he does make sense, though, if you want to throw him in uh, with your uh, exotics for sure, because sure. he seems like no, a no, no. He always runs his race. It's yeah. just he finds a way to get himself beat. Yeah. All right. Uh, by the way, the horse in between, uh, what do you think about the long shot frosted departure, um, the McPeak horse? And I mentioned that because last year, you know, decent numbers, 10, 11, 10. Uh, then he had a couple of bad races, came back with an eight at Oaklawn Park in a mile and a 16th at this distance. That was that wire to wire win. Then what? Predictably bounced to the 18. That was a pretty bad bounce, but still uh, kind of faded late. So, I mean, we are talking a 15 to one shot. I mean, anything here as far as this horse uh, it, it possibly to hit the board? The problem I had with him is that his good races were on Lasix. When he comes off of Lasix, and I think they're coming off of Lasix this week, that's his problem. Okay. If he was on Lasix, I would have him, but I had to downgrade him because he's coming off of Lasix, and his races without Lasix are just not the same. Okay. Can I, uh, can I tell you the greatest story about Frosted Departure, John? The greatest story. <laughs> I'm this sure. horse was, this horse was in the November sale. Okay, entered in the November sale. He was entered in the Steel Valley Sprint November twentieth. The entries were before the sale. Okay, so the horse gets sold. Kenny McPeak was the trainer. The horse got sold to Ramon Tala. That's where you see the RT Racing Stable. He's a big owner. He's got a few different trainers in the in the states. Kenny McPeak goes, "Hey, buddy, listen. The horse has already entered in in uh, in Ohio. It's just up the road. Let me keep the horse." And the guy said, okay, keep the horse. And he ran the horse two days later in the Steel Valley Sprint that he was already entered in with a different ownership group. Oh. He froze at the best part of the story. He froze. He says <laughs> it's this and a horse says there is. Um, I, I mean, maybe he doesn't like a sloppy track. I, I can I can maybe maybe excuse that last race. His his off-track races are pretty poor. Um, but ultimately, I, I just I don't think his ceiling is high enough. Okay, uh, let's talk about Octane, the five at five to one. Nice lines, uh, last three with the new trainer, uh, immediately went to single digits, seven, and then two nines, John, all at Gulfstream Park. He's okay, I mean, but he's running at Oakland for the first time. Not easy to ship in and win. Usually you need a work or race over the track, so that's my concern with him. But off of numbers, he certainly figures. Look, he's been my top pick the last three times he ran, and I think he's run he's run well. Uh, but I agree with John 100%. Oakland is a very difficult place to ship. You want to get to work over the track, and I, I do have a concern that he didn't work over the track. So really, we want I'm not, not going to get it, but we'd want more than five to one, and then we'd go okay. Well, m maybe at that number, I'd I'd do it, but not at. Well, five let to me one. just tell you one thing about the morning line at Oakland. <laughs> Okay. It doesn't, always, it doesn't always equate to what the real morning line always, is. Always, ever, ever. I mean, whoever makes the morning line, I don't like to knock people when they can't defend themselves. But to whoever did, does it is horrible. So I can get the job there. He's one of the worst morning line makers in the country because you'll see horses that he lays 15 to 1 that go off favorites. More of his 15 to 1 shots go off shorter prices okay. longer. And that shouldn't be when you, you know, when you're giving when you're making horses fifteen to one. You can't always be wrong. He's always wrong. So, so that's actually good for the, uh, the the betters over in Europe that have the fixed uh, numbers. Yeah, Rockface or somebody last week locked in at some horse at a big price. I think. Look, the, you you want to talk about the wrong morning line? This one's not even that bad. The Rebel, the, the Rebel might be one of the worst morning lines I've ever <laughs> okay. seen, ever seen. 
All right. So yeah, by, there you go. By the way, in between races, I am going to update uh, the comments because we've neglected them the last week or two. So we've got to catch up there. Okay. Next up is um, let's talk about uh, the nine, the eight horse, the nine to two shot, Magic Tap, an, an Asmussen trained horse here with Gaffleone on board, coming off a nine at Oaklawn Park uh, at a mile and an eighth. Also had a nine last August. Raced in the Pennsylvania Derby. That was a grade one race, but is coming off his third career win, John, running a nine. He's fine. He goes back to Gaffleone today. Esmussen's been on fire there. Every horse he's sending out is winning. This horse has a race over the track last time, and he won. What he ran well when winning. He's fine. There's nothing wrong with him. I mean, he's a little light, maybe on experience. You know, uh, he's been in one graded stake where he finished fourth that day but for the most part he's been running against uh, inferior horses than he's meeting here today is that his brother that rides no that's his son his son <laughs> yes so his son got on board at oakland park last time out won the race and he kicked the son off for gaffleone right well it's not that he kicked the son off i guess winchell opted to get tyler gaffleone as opposed to keith esmussen keith esmussen's fine but he's a young rider and you're not going to run him in that spot chad Look, this horse is the horse with the highest ceiling, right? We talked about, well, we don't know where Frosted Departure. He has every right with, with the connections, with yeah. everything else involved. He can he can win this race, move forward, and everyone goes, he's a major player in the older male division the rest of the year. It wouldn't be a surprise. However, and, and look, maybe he needed the race last time out, okay? He was coming in off a layoff. And the Pennsylvania Derby fourth was better than it looked because nobody was beating Saudi Crown that day. Saudi Crown ran really well. So there's nothing wrong with running fourth in the Pennsylvania Derby and the step up from the AO than allowance race. I just feel like his race last time was just kind of okay. There were kind of four heads on the wire. Um, he won, but it wasn't flashy. Uh, I want to see more. And and at, at nine to two, even though I say he can be this, I'm not sold and I'm not going to back him at nine to two. Uh, the rest of the field are long shots, uh, so let's talk about some of them. Um, the six, Midnight Range, a 30 to 1 shot, is coming off an 11. First time on dirt, went to Oaklawn Park, went almost wire to wire. Uh, and uh, so I guess we're expecting a bounce, but still, he's 30 to 1, John. Yeah, I mean, he ran it on the mud, so who knows? Uh, I guess they're expecting good weather there Saturday, but that race was run in the mud and another one coming off of laces. John, when you when you look at the sheets, okay, just as a, as a sheet as a sheet player, right? So you have this horse who he has all turf form, okay, and then his first race on a on a dirt track was a sloppy track. Is that considered a dirt number to you, or do you keep it in line with the turf numbers, or it's, a, it's an anomaly? Do you still look at them as a first-time dirt? What do you what, how, what do you do in the situation oh, when you're evaluating this horse? I'll use him as – I'll give him more credit for being a dirt horse than a turf okay. horse. I mean, you know, because it's in line, even though it was dirt, okay. but the track was off. So okay. you have to minus something for that, but you don't want to give him no credit for doing it on the dirt. He did it on the okay. dirt, right? Yeah. No, no, fair, fair enough. I didn't, I didn't know. I and didn't the know problem with off there. tracks, as you know, Chad, every off track is different. I mean, sure. you're going to never get two off tracks the same. The only difference about an off track over there in Oakland is they don't put any chemicals in the track or they anything. Can. Yeah, right. they can. It's, exactly. a, it's against the law. So for that reason, their off tracks seem to be more in tune. You know, like an off track at Oakland is usually the same off track that you're going to get for the most part. Not to get to the secret sauce that that is the the sheets, okay, and, and obviously a product that you you and your family are so well known with for years. Is is that taken into consideration? Uh, is is every sloppy track looked at differently, like graded differently when well, they come that, up? With that's up. That's up to the for, to the handicapper to decide. But the numbers, okay. I'm sure, come out different because look what right. they do at Aqueduct. One day the, the the track is as slow as could possibly be. Right. I mean, right. you know, it's crazy. You're running in quicksand. It makes it harder to make the numbers. To be honest with you, but they've had so much experience and success over the years that. We believe okay. what they say. Okay. All right. Uh, the seven, uh, U.S. Army is a 15 to 1 shot. Um, I mentioned him because his last two races are not bad. 11 at Oakland Park, out of mile on a 16th, finished third in that race, and an eight the race before that, John. 
Yeah, okay. Again, uh, Greg, you're gonna have a, you have a, two groups of horses here. You have horses like Speed Bias and Magic Tap and Octane that can run those eights and nines, and then you have the next group of horses that can run the elevens. They're not that far away. If one of them make a forward move, they could certainly get in the mix and mess things up. You know, the whole key is going to be really what is the four going to do? Ain't life grand? Because they have him at seven to two, I guess, which is close to being the favorite. So if he scratches and opts to run the next day, well, all these odds are going to change anyway. So, like, if you had six to one on speed bias, you're probably going to get three to one or, or you know, whatever. Yeah, so. I missed uh, that. Is that what Chad, is that what you guys talked about? He might Chad scratch. Said the four, yeah, the four is entered again on yeah. Sunday. So he's going to decide after he looks at this race and realizes this is a much tougher race than Sunday's that maybe he'll opt for Sunday's. And, of course, listens to our show. He's probably, you know. Right, of course. He's probably a Patreon member, I'm sure. Uh, look, uh, U.S. Army is an interesting horse. Owner George Sharp, who I equate to uh, the Miley Cyrus song, came in like a wrecking ball, um, has been very aggressive in spotting his horses uh, since he came into this industry a few years ago. Um he might have a big day in store on Saturday because not only does he have U.S. Army, uh, but he has Mena uh, in the Rebel. And both horses are live long shots and deserve a long look uh, in a race that's kind of maybe it's just a situation to where um, why can't this horse have a shot? I think this horse is definitely uh, worthy of consideration for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we've got OP Firecracker. That's the 9, a 15 to 1 shot coming off a 10. Um, we have Notary. The 11 horse is a 10 to 1 shot coming off a 9 at Oaklawn Park. And this horse does have, what, uh, three wins in the last five races since the trainer change, John. Yeah, but he's now you're getting to outside posts. To win from the 11 post at a mile and a 16th at Delco, not the easiest place. Obviously, if he runs the nine that he ran last time, he has a shot to upset. But I don't know if he's going to repeat it. It was a top. He's six years old. Chances are he's going to react. Escapologist, 20 to 1 shot. Another McPeak horse. Brian Hernandez on board. It looks a little slow. Uh, Bolsey, the 13 at 15 to 1. Pretty consistent with some of these numbers. I mean, does have two tens and an eleven in his last three races, coming off a win at Oaklawn Park. Uh, he's got a couple of wins at Oaklawn Park, but of course, the way outside post number thirteen. Out of all those long shots, Chad, uh, which one uh, do you uh, do you want to look at the most? I, I think I want to look at uh, U.S. Army. I mean, I think U.S. Army is the the one that kind of stands out to me a little bit. Um, I will say that. Promise Keeper's best races. Um, put season. Uh, he was an old Todd Pletcher horse that was kind of flirted on the Derby Trail. I think he won the Ohio Derby as a three-year-old. Uh, Promise Keeper at twelve to one is an interesting horse for, for Robert Dino Robert Tino Diodoro, who can certainly get hot at any time. All right, let's go with picks, John. What you gonna do? I'm using the three speed bias, and exact is over the four, five, and eight, and you could reverse them small. Three with four, five, eight. Chad. If the four ant life grand does run, uh, I will make him my top selection just on class. He's a really cool, almost jet black, gorgeous, gorgeous horse. I watched him work uh, 57 flat uh, before the Travers with Tammy Fox uh, just aboard as a passenger. Um, if he doesn't run, though, uh, I will take a, a slight swing at a big price here uh, to the seven U.S. Army uh, with Promise Keeper as well. All right. And uh, I'm going to go ahead with the f – I, I agree with the four. By the way, the numbers, uh, Chad, that's four with what? Seven. Oh, and just four seven. With, uh, four with seven, ten. Seven, ten. Okay. Right. And, you know, look, speed bias is always going to hit the board. So, you, I mean, you have to – speed bias has to be on your ticket underneath because he's always he's always around. All right, and yeah, I, I agree. If Ain't Life Grand is going to race, I'm going to take the four over the eight and 11. And um, if four doesn't run, then I'm definitely going to take a look at uh, the seven and John's three. Okay, let's go ahead to race number 11. This is the Rebel. So this is the Kentucky Derby prep race. We have 
uh, about uh, 20 minutes. Uh, before we get into that, just quickly, I want to go over the comments from the past week. Mr. Guitar 610 this is for Chad. Chad Summers said Sierra Leone did not have a five furlongs workout, but Chad Brown workouts are usually four furlongs. He seldom does a five furlong workout. Am I mistaken about this? No, he's, he's 100% right. I, I, I used to host a radio show uh, on Sirius Radio, um, and I was I was blessed that I had a guest. It was one of Al, as maybe Alan Jerkins' uh, last ever interviews, and Alan Jerkins was very deadpan at the time. And he goes, you know, back in his day, they'd work six furlongs, seven furlongs a mile. He goes, these these new hotshot trainers, they only go a half mile. I watch them gallop out; they go more than a half mile, but uh, they only want to report it that they want a half mile and want a half mile. Uh, he's right. You you don't see a lot of five furlong works. Maybe before the Derby, uh, and I would imagine you'll start seeing five furlong works now uh, from Sierra Leone. Because if you go back and you look at uh, Zandon, for example, I remember he fired a couple of five furlong works at Keeneland uh, going into it. But he's 100 percent right. He's 100 percent right. Look, we got some sharp viewers. Um, that was the reason why, not that it was atypical of Chad Brown, but just because it was typical of Chad Brown. And Chad Brown, look, you can get a horse more fit on the horse is an anomaly the horse is a very special horse but chad brown's a great trainer look he's a multiple eclipse award winner he's won every big race there is to, to win other than the derby um and and tip my cap to him the horse was ready tyler gaffalone gave a great ride and the horse was ready but i would have had a little bit more confident if i had seen a five furlong work but you know we didn't get past our man our, our man uh, john hardoon who was all in yeah, matter of fact, Dan Rupp. Uh, once again, John, great call. You're on a, f you're on fire. Loved oh, your strong opinion last week. Keep it rolling. Uh, Rockface, well done, John. Uh, let's see. Uh, you mentioned Rock again here. Evening lads, uh, does Chad have any opinions on any horses in Saudi on this Monday coming? I'm, I'm not sure what he meant by that. Just uh, thought... and, and then, I think he meant the yeah, I think he meant the Saturday. So okay. we've covered that. We've done that a little okay. bit uh, at, at the top of the show. Uh, All for right. sure. And uh, Victor Free, can't wait till you forward the Derby winner to us, Needy Betters. I think you guys are terrific. That's Victor Freed. Uh, and then two comments regarding when we asked about. Hold, hold on one second on that. Just one second on that. John, gun to your head. Is Sierra Leone your, your derby horse right now? Now you want me to pick a derby yeah. horse? Yeah, 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 yeah. Today. Yes. Okay. And and should I be adding anybody? I'll bring this up with Chad a little bit later on. We'll go over a couple of these when I. Because we we'll close John off, and then I'll spend a, a couple of minutes with Chad going over a couple of these derby contenders that I wanted to ask him about. Um, uh, and rock, by the way, we, we and we mentioned last week the Mount Rushmore of American Phillies. So we have a couple of viewers that responded. Rockface, my Mount Rushmore, Ruffian, Rachel Alexandria, Personal Ensing. Um, and he said personal answer. Good for Rockface. He picked that up. He's good. He's sharp, that guy. He's right. He's a, his Mount Rushmore is right on. And uh, he says, Zenyatta, I don't think personal ensign gets enough credit. She tops my list. Uh, it was great. And JW says, Rags to Riches and Rachel Alexander. Rags, Rags to Riches was pretty special. Look, Rags to Riches yeah. was, was, she was, she was, she was to, to win the Belmont Stakes is not an easy thing to do. She was she was special. Oh, with Julie Crone? No, 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 that was Colonial. Who wrote her? Gary Who Gomez. Wrote? Gary Gomez. Oh, Gomez. Wow. Gary Gomez is right there. All right, let's get to the oh, Rebel. Julie Crone wrote that horse for Schulhofer. What Colonial horse? Colonial Affair. Colonial Affair. That's it. Colonial Affair. I remember that horse. All right, eleventh mile and a sixteenth. The Grade Two Rebel. $1.25 million race for three-year-olds. This should go off about 6.23 on Saturday. Uh, let's Eastern go. or Central time? What's that? Is that Eastern or Central Eastern. time? That's Eastern, huh? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Central will be 5.23. They have lights at Oakland? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, have I, was, I was able there. They also didn't have windows when I was there. And when it got <laughs> cold, it got freaking cold. We, we used to put, like, this plastic tarp. Uh, and we'd we'd hang it up like uh like in a baseball game where you're covering up the field. Yeah. But it was so cold. And when the wind would come, it would just rattle this plastic, and the horses would all go crazy. It was not exactly my favorite winter, I'll tell you that much. But my rent was only three hundred dollars a month. Those are the days. All right. <laughs> uh, let's talk first of all. We have to about Timberlake first. 
six to five on the morning line. Uh, obviously, the the horse to beat, the Brad Cox horse, coming off an eight last time out, uh, running fourth in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile race. Hasn't raced since that race. Uh, that was in November. Uh, I mean, the sheets are nothing spectacular except the eight is the one that sticks out. The other numbers, we do have a 10, we do have a 12. But one thing I did notice, John, is for those first four races, he was inconsistent, not good, good, not good, good. But he did get consistent with those last two. So what about Timberlake as the heavy favorite at six to five? Well, if he runs, he's going to win. No one else has an eight. No one else has a 10. No one else has a 12 as a two-year-old. And he has them all. So I don't know what you were complaining about. Listen, he was a young horse. He was getting better with each start. The question is, where has he been since the Breeders' Cup? If he comes back, you know, 80%, he's going to beat this field. There's nothing in this field. He's the only horse that has a single digit. Everyone else has double digits. I don't know. Chad would know more about him than me. Is there any concern, and this is weird, um, but I, I was I was talking to a mutual friend of ours last week. And we had a horse coming back off a layoff, and I said, "Well, you know, the horse might need the race. He hasn't run in a long time. So, well, he won first time out, right? So he knows how to win off a layoff." Um, Timberlake. I don't believe that, by the way. That's nonsense. When someone tells me they won first time out to know how to win off a layoff, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. To okay, be honest, but, with you. but Timberlake, Timberlake was awful first time out. Was was the the, the highest regarded horse in Brad Cox's barn. Uh, went off six to five or even went money that day. Went off even money that day and walked out of the gate and was was completely green and, and not sure what was going on. Now, look, <laughs> he quickly corrected it. And, and his his problems first time out might as well have been just typical baby first time out starter, you know, greenness things more so than just not well prepared. On a um, track, but- on a, by the way, also on a track when you could not pass a horse. Ellis Park was a complete yeah. conveyor belt that entire week. So just okay. keep that in mind. I'm not saying that it mattered, but so so you know, look, th- these are things to, to keep in mind. He's he's been off since November. He doesn't have the work over the track. Although Brad Cox has done this very well, shipping horses in from fairgrounds. He seems to have the recipe on on how to prepare one, you know, to win at Oakland. But he's got a new rider in Christian Torres with Laron Giroux being in in Saudi Arabia to ride Saudi Crown. So the oven, you know, that's Giroux's been on him. Not only has Giroux been on him. For every one of his races, he's been on him for eighty percent of his workouts. I mean, Drew okay. loves his horse, and and so Christian Torres has done a great job, and he's he's the leading rider at Oakland right now. C- certainly, no harm in in picking up the services of Christian Torres. But there's familiarity with Drew that there's not going to be with Christian Torres. I'm not saying the horse can't win. I'm not saying that the horse probably doesn't win. But there are enough factors there where you can at least make a case for a couple others here. It's not a it's not a bingo square. Where we're no. saying, hey, Timberlake is is. Let's just give. Uh, Listen, give, two weeks give ago, owners, give, two, give Windstar Farm the the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar prize. Two weeks ago, fierceness was a free bingo square <laughs> off the layoff, and he didn't run. So yeah. of course, when you're going to beat these horses, this is the time to beat them. Their first start back. If you're ever going to take a shot against the short price horse, you want to take it when they're most vulnerable. And I think their first race back off of a layoff with bigger fish to fry down the road makes them vulnerable. I'm not saying he's getting beat. I I wouldn't know who to bet if I didn't pick him, honestly. So, uh, you well, know. Th- there I'm might be saying, some good exact bets then, at least, even if yeah, he does win. find some prices underneath. Yeah, and this yeah. is a 13-horse field. So um, the second money, to lo- money line uh, contender is just steel way out at post number 11. Um, the last four races are 12, 13, 10, and 15. So, uh, yeah. I love this horse in the Southwest when he ran second at a big price. He looked like he's going to win by five when they turned for home and some other horse just swallowed him. I don't think he wants to go this far, honestly. That's my problem with just. This is the D. Wayne Lucas horse. Yes. Chad? Well, speaking of four furlong works, you see D. Wayne Lucas comes in off a six furlong work. Talking about very much the uh, the old school mentality. This is a six for long work on the heels of just running. He's run more times than anybody else in the field. This will be his tenth career start. Um, de- definitely, Dwayne Lucas likes the owners to get their money's worth on the the horses that they purchase. Uh, <laughs> look, he I agree with John. He ran a super race in the Southwest. He's run some really really admirable races. But you know, there's a difference here between old school and new school. And and Coach Lucas, who's won 
as many Triple Crown races as anybody, it will never change his stripes. He's always going to be the way that he was back then, is the way that he is now, et cetera, et cetera. And, and these other horses come in and having the advantage of being a little bit more fresh, where Just Steel has been just running. And, you know, the race was February 3rd, comes back here now a, a little quick. You know, remember, this was a race that was uh, postponed because of weather delays. So this race was originally supposed to be the Southwest was supposed to be a week or two earlier. So most of the horses that ran in the race and ran well, other than Just Steel, have skipped this race. Mystic Dan, who won the Southwest, is waiting for the Arkansas Derby. The uh, the third place finisher, Liberal Arts, is waiting for the Arkansas Derby. Do you want Lucas goes? Ah, we'll don't worry in this race in the Arkansas Derby. Don't worry. <laughs> let, him, don't worry. Let, him play, let him play too. We're here for that. We're here for we're here for a good time, not a long time. Uh, as our man Drake likes to say. It's like an extended <laughs> workout. Look, I mean, he's a cool horse. I just I just worry about. It's going to catch up to him. A little yeah. bit more fresh. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit sharper. But he's a cool, he's a cool horse, and like he's, I mean, travel did travel like a winner last time out for sure. And he's seven and two. That's 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 not good. That's not what we're looking for. Maybe we'll get better odds on Saturday. All right. Uh, next up, uh, as far as the odds are concerned, let's talk about Northern Flame, the two horse at five to one, a McPeak horse coming off a sixteen, a wire to wire win at Oaklawn Park, John. I would rather bet the one at 15 to one than the two at five to one, to be honest with you. I would rather bet the nine at 20 to one. Okay. Well, well, we'll, we'll get to those horses. Okay. But uh, I mean, no, at six to so one. So you I don't, don't like Northern Flame. Is that what you're saying? Not at the price. No, he's no better than other horses in the race. Look, this horse was originally going to Saudi Arabia. He was supposed to run on the Saudi Cup and, and uh, just didn't show up the day before the plane. He, he had a he had a ticket. He he, uh, he had a, his uh, his, was his right. luggage was ready, but uh, but he ended up not making the flight and, and electing to run here instead. Um, look, it's it's certainly an interesting thing. The horses run a couple of races that are okay, but both of his wins, for whatever it's worth, were wire to wire races where the pace wasn't very fast. And I don't see him working out that same trip here. Uh, he he earned the victory last time out, but I'm not sure he was the best horse that day. Mena, who was a former Maiden 30 claimer that's in this race uh, for the aforementioned George Sharp, uh, who's going to be a much bigger price, um, was second and was really, really flying late. So I'm, I'm against Northern Flame here. And then the only other horse in single digits on the morning line is uh, Domatic, the sixth horse at 8-1, to one, the Asmussen trained horse with Gaffleone on board. The Sheets say he's heading in the right direction, but... It's kind of way back at 17. His last uh, is broke his maiden with that 17 at Oakland Park. He only has three career starts, so he needs some more seasoning. Listen, he's super bred. They probably paid all kinds of money. Chad would know. And the horse obviously could be any kind, but I don't think yet. Give him some time. The, the eye test on this horse is positive. If you go back and you watch the replay of his three year starts, each start looked like he's figuring it out a little bit more. It looks like he's getting a little bit better every single time. He put it all together last time. And you notice here, Steve Asmussen wasn't content with that victory. Adds blinkers. You don't see a lot of times that a trainer is going to add equipment change off of a win. But that's exactly what we get over here. He's adding the blinkers off the victory. And he's 16% first-time blinkers. Obviously, Asmussen has good stats around the board anyway. Um, but certainly interesting to note that he's adding adding the blinkers for this one as he's trying to get him to maintain his focus. He makes this big move on the turn and he kind of looks like he's just, he's still a little bit lost, but every start ticket, ticket, ticket has been better and better and better. And I look for this one to continue moving forward. Before we get into uh, the rest of the field, um, we have about uh, five minutes max left with John. So John, I'm just going to go ahead and ask you to go ahead and give us uh, the, 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 the horses you like. And then give us your pick so we can let you go. Okay, so I'm going to put Timberlake, who's going to be three to five, on top of three bombs, hopefully all prices, over the nine Lagunas, or whatever his name is, over the 13, Time for Truth, and over the one. Seven over the one, nine, and 13. And, and you want to uh, elaborate a little bit on those other three horses, the reason you're going with them? I'm only going with them because they're prices. They're all big prices. And as far as the numbers are concerned, they have as good a shot as anyone else. And their price is five and ten times the price of other horses. So if you notice, I took the favorite and I put a 15 to one, a 20 to one, and a 15 to one underneath. 
So I'm trying to turn this. Are, 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 are you concerned, though, that Timberlake is forwardly placed and you're playing him underneath with the two fastest horses in the race in Carbone from the inside uh, and the outside horse there, um, the 13 time for truth, who's stretching out from the sprint, where both of them, all three of those horses want to be one, two, three early. So you're hoping that it's just kind well, of Timberlake a. Uh, a doesn't have to be, Timberlake doesn't have to be one, two, three early, does he? Yeah, I've, I've seen sure him. He does. If Timberlake's not one, two, three early, I quit. Okay. Oh. No. Well, there's no. Listen, Brad, Brad Cox loves speed. Brad Cox knows yeah, that this horse's okay. best races are in front. He's he's going to the lead. Listen, I mean, he might not be fast enough in Time for Truth. Time for Truth is a really really fast horse, but Timberlake is 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 very much going to be forwardly forwardly ridden. Okay, so he'll get first run on them. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, All right. I, John, yes, in my opinion, that was it. Next week. Uh, Big racing next week. We've got the Gotham. We have the Fountain of Youth and a big day at Santa Anita, including the Santa Anita Handicap. Two grade ones at Santa Anita. So it's going to be yeah, a, probably a five horse field. So I wouldn't get yes. that excited. Not, not the biggest Santa Anita fan. John Hardy. No, I love Santa Anita, uh, but I would love it if they had horses that ran there. Yeah. Unfortunately, the you know with the rain, they can't train. So they're really up against it. They're having a hard time. So. Well, fingers crossed. We'll see what happens That's next it. week to kick off uh, the season. Well, for sure, we'll be doing the Gotham, I guess, in the Fountain of Youth. So I would put Florida and New York as, you know, yeah. looking. And there the Frankie is. Kilroy is also a great one. But like you said, if the San... If oh, the, but that's turf. That's turf. That there may get more than uh, five horses. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Well... All right, guys. Chad, have a safe trip back. Good luck. Greg, I will talk to you. Thank you, everybody. And Thanks, uh, John. Let's make some Stay money. Hot. Absolutely. Let's yes. Stay, Stay hot. All right, that's John. That's John Hardoon saying goodbye. So let's uh, continue, Chad, through the field here, and we'll start with John's pick, uh, the one Carbone, a fifteen to one shot. One of the Asmussen horses has raced the last two at Oaklawn. The sheets are going in the opposite direction, though. Thirteen, fifteen, and twenty. Yeah, look, he, he's a horse that's probably better sprinting. I know he won going a mile uh, at Oaklawn two starts back, but he he needs things his way, his own way. And like I said, said before. There's there's enough pace in here. He's he's on the rail. He's going to take all that outside speed coming from the inside. I just I don't like him here. It's tough for me to endorse him here. All right, and then the four, uh, the three common defense. Not one of uh, John's picks. Uh, this is a McPeak Hernandez combo. So that's a nice combo. But this is the third race in five weeks, I believe, for common defense, and the numbers seem slow. No, January third. February 3rd and now February 24th so I mean you're talking about I guess more like s almost seven weeks but but I mean look yeah he, he, this is what happens with with these three-year-olds right when you're trying to make the derby you have to run you have to like this is why this is why they say that the triple crown trail ruins horses because if this horse wasn't trying to make the Kentucky Derby do you see so many in succession probably not but you're trying to get points you're trying to make the derby and so you're, you're going like this, like this, like this to try and make the Derby. And then after the Derby, it's like, you know, that's why you see so many horses that make the Derby. They never win again. They never run again. It's, it's, it's a chicken yeah. or the egg defense, but you only have one chance to make the Derby. This horse um, was a homebred that didn't sell um, as a, a yearling. After the first race, David Bernson bought into, bought into the horse and I guess majority ownership. And he won the maiden race last time out. His race last time was sneaky good. And this was one of the ones I was talking about with the morning lines maker. He should not be okay. uh, 30 to 1. He he ran okay. a sneaky, sneaky good race last time in what was a good race with Mystic Dan, just the liberal arts we talked about before. He's going to continue to get better. And Kenny McPeak kind of hints his hand at that by, by bringing in Brian Hernandez, who they've had a lot of success together. Brian Hernandez was aboard Mystic Dan when they ran this race last time. Now he... I'll be licking my lips if they stay at the 30 to one. I don't think he'll stay at 30 to one, um, but this horse is a very, very live horse at a big price. Uh, the other two uh, next two horses look a bit slow to Han pass and magic grant. Anything there before I move on? No, I think, I think the Han pass is kind of up against it, but you know, we'll, we'll be involved early on in the race. You would, you would think kind of keep them honest in front uh, magic grant. I, I think he needs to get better. 
All right, let's now talk about, well, also the same thing can be said about the eight next level. Do you see anything there? It looks a little slow. Yeah, so uh, next level is a uh, an interesting horse. Um, I'm going to be watching his race in particularly very closely. Oh. He's, uh, he's, he's a grade one placed horse as a two-year-old. Um, he did that as a maiden. He's run some really good races. He's run some really bad races. He was a $20,000 purchase for Keith DeSormo, who does this all the time. He finds these diamonds in the rough, and they do this. They win. They win. They run really good, and they run really bad. There's, they don't have a lot of consistency. So what do you do in this race? I think he's the kind of horse that you include in your tickets, in your horizontal tickets, as a possible winner at big, big price. But he can also not even hit the board. Yeah. I, I, I mean, he's that's how he runs. That's how he is. He was the best horse last time. He was really wide. Um, I think he's beat him Woodcourt, who's in the race with him. I'll take next level over Woodcourt every day of the week. But can he put it together? Can he can he replicate? And again, he, right now, he's just a little too slow uh, for the better horses in this group. But he's sitting on one. And Keith the Storm always gets – one one big race out of them um could it be here uh why why not but if they do don't tell my wife <laughs> okay uh the that's the, name of the stable. that's the name of the stable the nine is laganos and this is one of john's plays 20 to one shot asmussen the asmussen combo and uh, why not and if you take a look at the sheets they're not bad in this race uh with the three races on dirt 16 14 and then the 17 last time out at Oaklawn Park in the, what, Smarty Jones? That was um, on New Year's Day. Disappointing sixth. Uh, really tailed off after this horse once. Well, actually, yeah, it's kind of weird because you look at it. It looks like the, the horse is a closer or at least a stalker. And then in that race, he goes for the lead for some reason and then just falls apart. So his, his best race was probably his second race where he lost in the allowance race behind the highly regarded parchment party who's 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 out for a little R and R right now and won't make the Derby. Um look this Murray Jones hasn't come back as the strongest race. I know Just Steele came back and ran second, but uh catching freedom was okay last time. Uh informed Patriot was very bad in the Sunland Derby um at Z at Zia Park last time out or Sunland Park last time out. I this horse screams that he doesn't want to run that far. He's by Cantheros out of a Spitestown mare. Um I'd like to see this horse cut back in distance and be a closing sprinter. Um, but I understand you got to, you, you, you know, you, you stay on the derby trail as long yeah. as you can. And, you know, look, Keith asked me, sin, we talked about him before. Give it a go. He, he's, he's riding good. Steve asked me, sin, will be excited. Um, he's certainly loading the box to give himself every chance to, to win that elusive derby. All right, and then you've mentioned Mena, the 10, at 15 to 1. Now, what's nice about Mena, if you just take a look at the dirt races, the sheets are headed in the right direction. 27, a couple of 18s, 15 last time out, and that was at a mile, though, and that was the first race with the new trainer, but it was a 15 at Oakland Park. So, yeah, I mean, this is a, a maybe an interesting horse. What about Mena? This is the 2024 version of Rich Strike. Um, he was claimed for $30,000 from Brad Cox. Um, that barn kind of had given up on him after one start and he won by 12 and a half. He didn't run bad. His, his dirt races are good. You throw out the poly track race at Turfway. Yeah. He's not running on poly track here. Nothing wrong with that at all. I think he was the better horse than Northern flame when they ran last time. He continues to improve. Um, you know, hard spun's a, a, a hardy stallion Two fills. Uh, was second in the Kentucky Derby last year, a son of hard spun. So no reason to think that this horse can't can't run a big race. And why is he fifteen to one when when Northern Flame is five to one when they were neck apart from each other last time is is what we're talking about yeah. about the morning line speaker. Because this horse is trend like you said, trending in the right direction. No reason to think that he can improve. And, and I don't understand why he's three times the price <laughs> of, of Northern Flame. Yeah. And his sheet line was better too. Yeah. Northern Flame had a 16, Mena had a 15. Well, he was, I mean, he was wide. It, he, if you watch the race, he was, I, I thought he was the better horse. I mean, I, credit to Northern Flame in sticking it out because he could have, he could have got beat and he did battle back to hold on to the wire. But I thought Mena was, ran the better race. Speaking of going wide, what happened to that horse you mentioned last week? The one that you said that had the one race, I believe, 
and you said, look out for this horse in the future because once he figures it out, he was all over the place in that first race. Uh, keep an eye yeah, on him. Yeah, the B jersey of, yeah. uh, of Dallas Pierce. He, he, you know, he he ran, uh, he ran okay. He's just not look. the The Derby Trail is is unforgiving, and it'll chew you up and spit you out as as quick as humanly possible. And if you don't know what you're doing yet, then <laughs> you don't know what you're doing yet. Yeah. And he broke okay. Uh, but this time, he kind of found himself in, a, in an unprecarious situation, and the other horses knew what they were doing. They went on about their business. Where in a maiden race, you can make these mistakes and still overcome and still be good enough. Where you know, in this situation, you can't. It's almost like uh, you know, say you, you put together a basketball team and they're finding themselves, and you know, you, you had an exhibition game against uh, the country of Spain, you know, and you, you held on. You know, but then you face the the Golden State oh, Warriors yeah. the next week, and and if your team's not gelled together yet, you're not gelled together yet. I, I haven't given up on the horse. I think he's going to be a nice horse, uh, but it was a little too much, uh, too soon. Yeah, uh, horse. that was that's well, we went off at ninety nine to one, right? <laughs> I think so. Uh, all right, and then we wrap up Woodcourt. You mentioned him at a twenty to one, the twelve horse. Uh, he looks a bit slow. Actually, uh, his numbers look like they're getting better. Uh, on synthetic but anyway and uh time for truth is the 13 the final horse of the field at 15 to 1 only two races first and second and really good numbers an 11 and a 14 that's really solid for the first two races you're getting Bejarano for the third straight he must like the horse and you're at 15 to 1 i know he's on the outside post but why not take a stab with time for truth as john did that's one of his horses He's a really fast horse, very, very fast horse out of the gate, and I expect him to be in front. He's coming back in two weeks. Now, the horse that, that beat him the other day in Valentine Candy is a solid horse. He's won, like, three stake races for Steve Asmussen. Um, certainly, you know, no harm in running second to him at all. Uh, but it's a big ass to stretch out and come back uh, in just two weeks with the outside post. It's just it's going to be too much to overcome, I think. All right, so let's get uh, your picks then, Chad. What are you going to go with? I'm gonna I'm gonna end up here with the number six dynamic uh, oh. for Steve Asmussen. I think the the trajectory is the right way. Um, I think Timberlake, you know, doesn't have to win this race. Uh, he might, and he'll be the big favorite. But maybe stubs his toe. Um, I'll use Timberlake underneath. Um, I'm definitely gonna use the three common defense at that big thirty to one morning line. Um, I'll use the eight next level, and I'll use the ten uh, Mena at fifteen to one. All right, six over seven, three, eight, ten. Don't forget, John has seven over one, nine, thirteen. And uh, I'll add, let's see, I'm going to include uh, Chad's six, three, and ten by adding the 13. So I'll put the 13 in that as well. All right, so uh, I wanted to ask you about the, uh, the, the, the horses, the top contenders right now, because I had a, I'm trying to put my, my list together as we go along here and the three that i had a, a couple of weeks ago the last time we talked about this i had door knock sierra leone and track phantom those are like the three main ones that only we've covered so obviously after last week sierra leone and track phantom stay the same but should i be adding any other horses right now to a top con uh, derby contender list or is it too early i mean look we're running we're running out of time now, right? I know I mean, you look, think so, right? You're only you're. I mean, we're 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 almost into March, and the Derby's in May, right? The yeah. first Saturday in May. Um, we're still going to see a lot of high uh, running next in Florida and the Fountain of Youth. You're going to see the debut of Doorknock three-year-old debut of Dornock. Okay, I don't think cool. you can write off fierceness yet. I mean, obviously as bad as he, not bad, but um, you know, fierceness, he needs to, he, he's, he's still shown that he can be brilliant. So he goes to the Florida Derby next. Um, so we'll see what happens with him. It's just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts for me. And, and, and I'll beat the drum on this because I don't, and, and again, I don't know where he runs back. I think he needs to run back. I mean, soon he's breezed, he's breezed twice um since the race and he's still a maiden and everyone's going to tell me that i'm absolutely insane because he's still a maiden but in my opinion the best 
three year old of this crop right now is still a claim victor. And we'll see what happens with him when he runs back next time. He needs to break his maiden and then he needs to take a swing, you know, probably at a race like the Wood Memorial would be my guess or something like that. Um, but a claim victor is going to be my top derby pick right now. Even with no points, it's still a maiden. Nobody ran a more impressive race to me than what he ran in that debut at Tampa um, back in January. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to him. The future is bright. We gave out the allowance winner for Todd uh, at Fairgrounds. That basically ran a match race with Nash. He's okay. Look for him to, to probably run back in the Arkansas Derby. Uh, I mean, in the Louisiana Derby, I'm sorry. The other, the other horse that we need to talk about here, and he's going to run on the Gotham next week, is a Brad Cox horse named Just a Touch, son of Justify, uh, one on debut, first time out. Looks to be maybe, I know the barn's high on Timberlake, but this might be their best derby shot. Uh, just ran the one time. He's a $300,000 two-year-old in training purchase uh, for guitar racing and Mark Dead. And I, I just, I feel like he's one that if he wins the, the Gotham next time out, his trajectory skyrockets. And he's a horse that a lot of people don't know about yet because he just ran the one race at Fairgrounds. He's 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 by Justify that won the Triple Crown again. Justify had only had three or four starts before he won the Kentucky Derby. And there's an uh, an interview in the Racing Post in England the other day uh, with trainer Aiden O'Brien, who's widely regarded as one of the best trainers worldwide. Yep. He trains for more in, in Europe, and and he's trained so many good horses. And he said in the interview that he thinks, in his opinion. Justify will end up being the greatest stallion of all time. Wow. So, I mean, those are big words from a guy who isn't really this boisterous, outgoing, open person. He's normally very well reserved, keeps his cards close to his vest. And he came out and said that he thinks Justify is going to be a, a game changing stallion. Uh, maybe Just a Touch is, is an example of that here in America, of continuing to parlay that. Don't forget his, his daughter, Just FYI currently the favorite in the Kentucky Oaks. She won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Look for her to debut here probably uh, Saturday in the Devona Dale would be my guess uh, at Gulfstream. So uh, a lot of good things looking forward with the three-year-olds. But those are two horses that nobody's talking about right now that I think they haven't they haven't run in a stake yet. I mean, I mean, Acclaim Victor hasn't won a race yet, but Acclaim Victor and Just a Touch are my top two horses right now that nobody knows about. And, and, and Just a Touch is running in the Gotham next week. Just a touch of schedule to run on the Gotham. I would imagine um, we'd look to see uh, Acclaim Victor running very, very soon. He's breezed, he's breezed twice uh, back to back since the last race at Tampa. I would look for him to be in the entries any day now. And Acclaim Victor has one race, one race, one second, and just a touch, one race, one win. Okay, all right, I love these it. Are, these are some of the lightly, light, lighter raced horses. Um, but they're horses that, you know, just kind of very, very, very high up. Excellent. Appreciate it, Chad. Uh, I know we don't get an opportunity to talk like we used to, but we'll have to change that because we are getting now seriously on the trail. Uh, so maybe sometime, cause what, what are you scheduled to return? Uh, next Sunday we'll run, we, we run Clapton on Saturday. We'll watch the, uh, we'll watch the Saudi cup with great interest as a lot of those horses will move on to the, the Dubai. It's a grade two uh, here at the track where the Dubai World Cup will be. It's a five hundred thousand dollar race, uh, and look, we we we've, we've come to the we've we've come to the Middle East with a plan. Um, didn't win the first race, but we're happy with how we ran. Um, really feel like he's moved forward greatly off of that race. This will be a big race with us. Everyone's talking about how good the Russian horse was that beat us uh, oh, yeah. last time. But you know, in in the movie, Rock was it Rocky Four, right? I mean, oh, against the Russian. Ivan Drago, he, 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 he takes out some of the competition, but at the end of the movie, it, it's Rocky standing tall and being saluted. So uh, we're hopeful that uh, even even though maybe we lost the uh, the first round, we'll end up with the TKO on uh, next Saturday. I like it. We'll definitely come uh, make sure if that happens, we'll come with the whole Rocky IV uh, <laughs> clips uh, ready to go there. So, But that's next Saturday. So that means, uh, yeah, so scheduling our show might be difficult next week then. It'll be the same. I think we'll be the same thing. Okay. We'll be okay. All same, right. Same thing. Same thing. And then I'll be back in America. The, the After that. 
All right. So, again, yeah. next week's going to be big. So that's really the first biggest Kentucky Derby weekend. Even though we had that show, you and I, a few weeks ago when we had five three-year-old races to talk mm-hmm. about. But – this is getting better now because we're talking about, again, the Gotham. Well, the- I think, look, the one thing that we saw last week, though, was Sierra Leone has now put himself in the, in the, in the, in the driver's seat. Yep. Okay? Here, here's the, here's the, the, the line of demarcation. You have to run better than me. I'm, I'm the best of the crop right now. He had shown it r- running so well against the bias and the Remsen. But, again, he had only run twice as a two-year-old, ran once now as a three-year-old. Here's who you have to be. We hadn't seen that yet, other than obviously Baffert's horse with with Nisos, who right now is is ineligible. The other horses, they've been good but not great. Sierra Leone did things that good horses that that Derby winning horses are supposed to do. Yep. Now we move forward to to, to this prep race here at Oaklawn, and it's okay. Now it's your turn, right? And you you continue to see as these races continue and as these races develop. Is there anybody on Sierra Leone's level yet? And again, the thing about the Kentucky Derby is it doesn't matter because it's not necessarily the best horse. Uh, it's the best horse on that day. It's not the best horse that wins. It's almost like, and I always equate these things to like these conference tournament titles and everything else with the in season to, to March Madness. Because I would say that maybe 40% of the time, the best team wins the college basketball. True. Team. Yeah. And in horse racing, I would say 30% of the time, the best horse wins the Kentucky Derby. Yep. And that's why even though it's, it's the race that everybody wants to win. And obviously the NCAA tournament is the, the thing that everybody wants to win, but it doesn't take away from the rest of your season. It'll take away from the rest of your year. The Breeders' Cup to me, it's an end of the year thing. You had to prepare your horse all year long to get there. Yeah. It's a little bit of a smaller, more concise field. Here, I mean, it's such a big field. Yeah, it's you crazy. Break good. Yeah, post is important. You know, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of moving factors. But right now, when we look ahead to the Kentucky Derby, the first Saturday in May, here's Sierra Leone. He's he's in the Derby. He's he's established himself as as the horse to beat. You know, for a guy in Chad Brown who's always been known as the turf trainer, but it doesn't take away from he's had a lot of success with dirt horses that get overlooked. Uh, and I'm sure he would love nothing more than to 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 add to his resume uh, a Kentucky Derby win. It's it's it, it's why you wake up every morning. You, you know, it, it's funny because guys like Chad Brown who are inundated with with top horses uh, every year they come in or every month they come in and have a new batch of cool horses. But the Derby is what gets you up in the morning time. The the chance of 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 going to the stable and saying, "Hey, I got the horse to beat." For the Kentucky Derby, it 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 just puts an extra pep in your step. It adds to the whole state, the morale of the stable. Which which look, when you work as hard as we work on the day in day out basis, you need that. You know, look, a win will, a, a win will pick you up. A, a stake win, you 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 beat your chest. But but a Derby favorite or having the Kentucky Derby, winning the Kentucky Derby, that lasts that that high lasts for for at least three hundred sixty three <laughs> days until the next. Jack it over to somebody else. And once you win it, it drives you to want to win it again. Uh, that's the competitive nature in us. Uh, that's why we do this for. But Chad Brown, right now, he holds the card. He, he has he has the uh, the Willy Wonka uh, trip to the candy factory, to the chocolate factory. And uh, and look at all eyes. All eyes are on him now, right? Every every work that horse does, every move that horse makes. Yeah. You know, you're very in the spotlight now. You're not you're not you're not coming in under the radar, right? So every Every and now you get the media requests that start filtering in more so than than normal, especially with this time of the year. Everybody wants to know because he is now uh, unquestionably the leader in the clubhouse. Until again Saturday, maybe there's a new one, but right now it's Sierra Leone. Yeah, I'm just popping up on the screen now. The uh, I guess they had a futures wagers pool four. So okay. Sierra Leone, as you can see there, six to one. But you see here, this this was the whole thing. Um, the favorite was th- all other three-year-olds. So the horses that weren't, that that, ha- that are unknown, the horses that, that I'm talking about, the acclaimed victors and just the touches, the Bob Baffert horses, if somehow something changes or they're allowed in the race, you got them at five to one. You have a, a, a load of horses at five to one. But you're close enough, you're far enough now 
uh, around where some of these horses should be a little bit more serious. And you're having Sierra Leone six to one door knock on races, a three year old at nine to one Timberlake on race this year at 15 to one. But the fact that Timberlake got that kind of support, uh, that to me screams that they think he's ready to run in this race at Oakland on Saturday. All right. And, uh, we'll talk more about this, by the way, what, what are, what are, what are all these horses here? Starting with a so gate, gate road. road was a gate road was a good second, uh, in the Sam F Davis last time. And is you know, running, out, uh, Amante Bianco. Uh, I don't know why he's on there. Born noble was second, the allowance race. I would expect we might see him in the, uh, the fountain of youth next time. Capital Idea was a really, really impressive maiden winner for Christophe Clement. Uh, not sure where we see him back. Maybe he goes back to New York for the for the Gotham. Maybe he goes to Florida. Maybe he goes to Tampa Bay Derby. Kind of wide open over there. Catching Freedom was was third in that race last time out. Deterministic is a horse um, that needs to get better. Uh, Dymatic at ninety nine to one. This that's my, my top pick there. Yeah. Uh, you know, so certainly you know he's unknown. Domestic Product was a good third. Uh, or second, I'm sorry, he was second behind Hades uh, last time out in the Holy Bull. Uh, El Grande O was the 99 to one shot, but he was second, beating a nose last time out of the mile and eighth withers. He's he has that that he's gone that distance. Epic Ride, it's a really cool horse. Uh, two for three lifetime, Turfway Park. Uh, we looked for him in the in the Sam in the Jeff Ruby Stakes next time out. Um, he's one that's an interesting horse. I try to buy that they wouldn't sell me. Uh, um, Fierceness, obviously, sixteen to one is fair odds. Yeah, fierceness is a horse that you know if if if, if fierceness comes back in the Florida Derby and wins by five, he he's five to one in the Kentucky Derby. Yes. So fierceness is one that you're rewarded at at, at sixteen to one. That's right, uh, forever young. That's the horse we talked about in, in Saudi. He's the Japanese contender. Has no points. Will have one swing uh, at the iron uh, running in the Kentucky Derby by going through Dubai. Um, so that's kind of. Um, low odds for the risk that's involved. Hades, look, he's a son of awesome slew, did nothing wrong. He he took the race to fierceness. He put fierceness away, and you get rewarded still twice the odds. I'm hoping he runs back uh, next week in the Fountain of Youth. I didn't want to wait and see him just in the Florida Derby. He needs more racing experience, uh, but he's a nice horse. Hall of Fame, really disappointed last week. Really, really disappointed. Uh, Honor Marie ran a sneaky good race. I was okay with that. Uh, Imperial Gun and Just Steel. Well, Just Steel we talked about. There's Just a Touch. That's the that's the horse we talked about yes. that uh, just ran the one time. Uh, he he was a, a horse in there, twenty seven to one. Um, so certainly well well supported. Knightsbridge is a horse that he was a maiden winner last time. Needs to keep getting better. Uh, Lat Long broke his maiden for Kenny McPeak. Um, interested to see where he goes next. Liberal Arts fifty seven to one on a horse who. Ran a sneaky good race uh, yeah. last time out in the Southwest. Yep. He, I mean, he's, uh, he's, because that race was delayed, because trainer Robbie Medina um, prefers to train him in Kentucky at his main string. He has a string at Oakland, but he's at the thoroughbred center. He's going to like to keep him in Kentucky where he's been kind of home. Uh, so they're going to wait and go fresh for the Arkansas Derby. But 57 to 1 is uh, nice odds over there. Uh, locked at 16 to 1. He's back on the work tab. Uh, he runs next in the Fountain of Youth uh, for Todd Pletcher. Lucky Jeremy, disappointed, uh, ran third in the Sunland Derby uh, on Sunday. Uh, ran okay. It'll be interesting to see where Bill Morey elects to send him next. Mystic Dan, 21-1, to 1, certainly fair odds. The winner of the Southwest last time goes to the Arkansas Derby if he can back that up. Nash, disappointed, three wow. races in a row. He ran second. He was at one time uh, <laughs> the horse yeah. uh, for Cox. He's now kind of uh, slid down the – the mantle a little bit uh no more time 99 to 1 no respect there for the sam f davis winner uh for young trainer jose d'angelo um we'll see him next in the tampa bay derby real man violin was kind of a no-show last week for kenny mcpeak uh resilience i'll tell you what resilience at 83 to 1 is certainly fair odds because he was fourth last week at fairgrounds a little bit of a trouble did a lot of the derby work uh battled through to the wire. I didn't think he ran a bad race. And if you get six to one on Sierra Leone, I don't think that resilience is um, eight times worse than he is or 10 times worse than he is. So um, I think that's fair, fair odds right now on resilience. Uh, Sierra Leone, we talked about uh, speak, speak easy. He's one that I want to see more of stronghold. He, he was the winner of the Sunland Derby. It was a 20 points to the winner. 
um, for Phil D'Amato. Ran a good race with Antonio Frezu. Uh, look for him next in a, uh, a prep race in, in California against the Bob Baffert horses. Uh, Timberlake, we talked about. Track Phantom, we talked about. Uh, Tuscan, oh, Tuscan Gold. Tuscan Gold, yeah, you talked about that horse, didn't you? He's uh, Yeah, Tuscan Gold, is uh, he's a cool horse. So um, he's going to... You know where he goes next is kind of the the question for him. That was a maiden winner for Chad Brown. I don't know that we see him next in the Fountain of Youth, but maybe we do. Um, Ninety two to one on an impressive maiden winner was was good. Tuscan Sky that was the allowance winner for for Todd Pletcher. We talked about that was earlier on the undercard at Fairgrounds that won basically the match race. Okay, uh, with Louis Saez uh, for Todd Pletcher. Uncle Heavy seventy two to one. Uncle that was Heavy. the Withers winner. Now with the quarantine that came from the herpes outbreak. Unfortunately, uncle heavy got sent to a farm in Pennsylvania and has only been training himself in a field. <laughs> so like the chickens. Um, hopefully that quarantine is going to be lifted on Saturday. He can return to parks. He was never going to run in the Gotham. They wanted to stay on the mile and eight distance. So we'll see him next in the wood. Um, but certainly look, he ran a good race. His sire social inclusion was, was a preakness horse, you know, a couple of years back. Um, He's he's certainly an interesting prospect at seventy two to one. West Saratoga, you know that was the dream story for Larry Demerit. He won the two year old stake race, uh, came back, didn't run bad, ran okay in the Sam F Davis, but apparently uh, none of the gamblers liked the Sam F Davis because all those races, uh, a gate road or a gate whatever was thirty seven to one, but the winner and third place finisher West Saratoga both ninety nine to one. <laughs> so um, I guess that race wasn't was taken with a grain of salt. But that's kind of the the the, the future field where we sit. Um, but I'm still sticking with my uh, my top pick, and I will be on a, uh, a mountain on this one because I promise you there won't be another Patreon show and there won't be another podcast on YouTube that will have a claim victor as their top derby horse uh, right now. But I'm 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 going down uh, with the ship. I love it, and 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 claim victor is the horse that's not on that list. So nope. Just nope. the touch has, is, but not a claim has, victor. Has, hasn't even won a race yet. Hasn't He's won a race yet. Yeah. yeah. I think he's going to win the Kentucky Derby in, in 11 weeks or whatever it is. All right. And, again, we don't know uh, when he's going to race again yet. No. Okay. Soon. Soon. Uh, for, for, for my sake, as, I, as I'm, on this, uh, yeah. I'm on this ledge, I'm hoping soon. Sooner the better. Who trains him? Todd Pletcher. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, he's, he's been there once or twice before. Just, just a couple times. All right, so that's a really good start for us to uh, round out the early Kentucky, even though it's not early anymore, but the Kentucky Derby contenders to keep an eye on. We'll definitely do a lot more of this once Chad gets back into the States in a couple of weeks. Next week, one more show over in uh, Dubai, and then uh, he'll be home and we'll be all together again. So uh, appreciate it because it's been – was that a cat, by the way, in the background? It sounded like a cat was in heat or something. We have uh, we have some cats, we have some birds. Um, believe it or not, we have some elephants and giraffes out here too. Uh, it's uh, it's not it's boring. Interesting. Like, That's anyone sure. who anyone who hasn't been here, I would I would highly recommend it. At least coming one one time. It is it's a special place. It, it, it has a very special place in my heart, and you know I've been blessed to to, to work for some some good people out here, uh, and thankful for the opportunities. And you know hopefully we can just keep this uh, keep this ride going. Yeah, matter of fact, uh, and uh, we'll be talking real soon, too, about when to ship me up to see you sometime in the summer. Um, yes, sir. I'm trying to think of doing it, like, maybe right around, ch- take a chance where I could also spend a day over at training camp uh, for the Jets. I haven't, I haven't done that in a long time. So maybe do a training camp day with the Jets, spend a day with you at the track. So we'll have to figure that out because that would be sometime, like, around July, And then spend August. a day with the Giants. Listen to that. The Giants, the Giants are close to us too. So go to the Jets, come to Saratoga, and spend the day with the Giants. Okay, I could do that. I'll. Why not? I know my uh, my good friend Ryan Dunleavy covers the Giants for the New York Post, so I, I'll I'll just have to make a real nice uh, hey, week of it. You'll be there. Ryan Dunleavy will be there. Will Saquon Barkley be there? Stay tuned no, and find out. It doesn't look like <laughs> it, but you never know. I mean, I've been talking to all the people I've been talking to. It's like, do you want to spend that much money on a running back? So I don't know. You know, last year the running backs seemed like they had all the leverage in the world, and now I don't know what happened this year, but now no no running back has any leverage whatsoever. No, it's it's sad too. 
because that's not the way the sport should be going, but it is. So, but that's another show. All right. Anyway, as always, thanks, uh, Chad. Really appreciate it. And your extra time as well. We'll talk to you next week. Talk to everybody next week. Don't forget description area of YouTube. If you're not a Patreon uh, yet member of uh, our show here, please do that. It's only $5 a month. You can't miss. uh, And uh, you can uh, cancel. Get your money back. No, but it's only five bucks. And you uh, have a whole month worth of videos. So uh, check us out on Patreon or, of course, on YouTube. We'll see you guys next time.